All right. This Hangout on Air is live. Hello, everybody. Where are you going? I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs> hey, guys. I'm Amy with iWire, joined by a, a whole group of us. You guys want to introduce yourselves? I'm Ignacio. I'm a developer. Yeah, doing some really cool things. I'm a neuroscientist, and I now own the data from iWire. He's got his own Hangout right back there. All right. This hangout on air is live. What? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Sorry, hold on. Sorry. <laughs> My voice just started playing again. I had the live stream. I had a, a double live, but. <laughs> Um, so, and Jinsup, after we um, do the introductions, Jinsup is going to give you guys a really nice overview of what's been going on and being solved and what's next in the pipeline. We all, who else is over here? Hello, I'm Shang. Shang, who is not named Shang, it's Shang. <laughs> I pronounced his name wrong. Shang, fine. <laughs> Actually, um, I prefer Shang. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you're American, you can call him Shane. Because sometimes you'll see him in what's your username in Iowa? Uh, Mewith, Mewith, M U W. Mewith. I don't know. You see, you see, um, Jensen in there sometimes. Um, cool. So I guess before, <laughs> occasionally he's in there quietly. Quietly, you're gonna chime in with science questions. Um, so I guess before we get started, let's have everybody on on the bottom kind of join in. So I'm at Princeton right now, which is where kind of Sung Lab has moved from MIT in Princeton, and Chris and, and I is at IOR headquarters in Boston. Um, so, Chris, do you want to intro yourself? Yeah. So, uh, I was uh, in the last Hangout just a little bit. Um, so, I'm one of the IOR developers. Uh, Will's um, out of town at the moment. So, I'm going to be rep rep uh, representing both of us. Can anybody actually hear me? Anybody hear me? Yeah, yeah, you can. You talking to me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who's talking. My camera's, it's Melissa. It's Melissa. I was the one that was there earlier this morning. Yeah, as long as we can hear, I mean, we can hear you, it's fine. Um, I can't see myself. I can't get my camera to work for well, some reason. Well, well that's okay. We'll, we'll continue if your camera, maybe it'll start working, but otherwise at least we can hear you. Um. So Chris, Chris is one of the, um, the the developers of iWire based in Boston, mm -hmm. and has been working on some really cool things. All right, and who else do we have here? Ilian, do you have a mic? I can introduce Ilian. He is crazy man. Oh, is he crazy man? Yeah, that's crazy man. <laughs> he has a mic and he says he can't use it at the moment. So. Ilian is crazy man four eight six five who holds the record for the most amount of points and the most amount of cubes scored in twenty four hours, I believe. I still I don't think that's been broken. I don't know, Nick, has it been broken? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Two thousand cubes, I think, and I don't even remember how many points. It's in the iWire record book. It was um, hundred and twenty and that I broke. Uh, oh you broke it. But then us just broke everything and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh man, demolishing our point systems. And then uh, Jinsup, I, I guess, is next in the line, but he'll he'll go right after everybody introduces. Oh, there's double Jinsups here. You guys, we're winning. We're lucky. We got two Jinsups today. Um, let's see who else. M, do you want do you want to put your do you want to introduce yourself? I don't know if she has a mic. You're muted, Marissa. M. M is the mysterious game master uh, who works at iWire headquarters in Boston. She's typing something in chat. She's just creeping today. She's just creeping. She's going to be quiet. She'll probably, she may be in chat talking to you guys. All right, who else? Manfred, do you have a mic? You want to introduce yourself? Who Manfred is? I don't know. Manfred, what's your if you if you do get a mic or if you want to type it in chat on the right hand side, just tell us what your iWire username is. Um, okay, and we've also got Melissa. You want to int introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Melissa0774, and I'm I'm here in New Jersey. I'm like ten minutes from Princeton. I'm the one that did the pictures of the those cubes that were on the blog. Yeah, those are so cool. The, yeah, the clay. 
Yeah, I was right about to. I actually have them right next to me. I was right about to show you one, and I remember my camera's not working. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh man, yeah. We'll have to post a link to that to that blog post because those are really cool. Yeah, I think I'm gonna unplug it if I can get it to work. If I plug it back in. Okay. Um, and then we've also got Nick here. You need an introduction. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I think Anne Seraph is known by now, so. That's who I am. But yeah. <laughs> Such a modest introduction from our top scoring player of all time. Well, I just play a lot. <laughs> yeah. And fast and accurately and well that. Awesome. Well glad glad you're here. Uh, and then we've also got Star. Is this Data Miner data minor Star? Or star? Can you hear me, Dave? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yep. I still have a terrible cold, so I hid my face. Oh, <laughs> get well soon. Is it what? you are Data Miner Star? Yes, Data Miner, I'm here. Cool. Can awesome. You Glad to have you. <clears throat> Um, and then I see Manfred has a face now. Okay. But um, if you so Manfred, if you get a mic, chime in and say hey and what your IOR user is username is. But so for now, I'm gonna toss it over to Zinsa, who is gonna give you guys an update because as you know, we finished phase two. Woo! Yay! Oh, you guys are cranking on that. That was really fast. Okay, so I'm gonna mute my mic and mute my audio and toss it to Zinsa. We can give you guys all the cool things, all the cool things and science updates you need to know. Okay. Uh, let me share my screen. You guys, <laughs> numbers. Yeah, what are these numbers? We had 245 cells as of 10th of October last year. And now we have 158 cells as of yesterday, which means we completed 87 cells in um, less than five months. That's awesome. A little more than four months. So at this speed, I think we could finish the countdown um, around October or November this year. Woo! We can speed up a little bit still, so um, there's a chance that we can finish it even earlier than that, so let's push, push it forward. All right, so let's... Um, Oh, screen share doesn't work when you go full screen. Um, because I don't know why. You guys can hear us okay, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oops. Motorcycles. That's what's next. All right. So um, we had three zones, and zone one correspond to phase one, zone two, zone three, phase two and three. These are the numbers we have to finish. And before countdown, we had completed these numbers of cells, and uh, after countdown, we had completed, or we will have to complete these numbers of cells. So in total, in each zone, there are 27 and 79 and 20, 42 cells. So I'm uh, gonna unshare this screen. It's complicated. There are there are two computers of oh, mine. I'm gonna share my um, Omni screen. Ooh, a special occasion, you guys! Omni. Okay. Now you are looking at the old. Uh, Wait, um, it's on. It's still. On, it's on your face though. Oh. So. Um. Oh, there we go. Oh. Okay. You guys seeing this? The cells popping up? 
There we go. Yes. Okay. So these are the cells we have reconstructed so far in these two zones, zone one and two, and we can clearly see that the cell bodies form some square, although there are a few holes which um, I didn't have time to uh, put them together back yet. The latest is a few cells, but it's clearly a square, which is the uh, square zone of 100 micron in the Gengia cell layer. And we have completed this much. Wow. And if we turn this over, we can see the cells from the side, each of which occupy different layers in the retina. And you can see how they are different. Cool. Oh my god, if so I many turn branches. This over, you see all the branches entangled like spaghetti noodles. <laughs> That's if crazy. I close up this further, zoom in further, you see all these entangled jungles of the branches of neurons. Wow. Let's wait a little bit to all for, for all the cells to be loaded. It's not it's not complete. So of the branches wow. being added. I think oh. we're not seeing it. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it. Uh, can you see it? Mm. Is my screen being shared? Yeah, I'm seeing it. Um, if you click on the second genset. Dada you you got to click on um, the one that looks like it is a very colorful screen. Got it. Did you get it? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Okay, okay. So many cells. That's crazy. So yeah. many cubes. Yeah, right? <laughs> and remember, this is made only by 100 cells. And there are even more cells, up to a few thousand of cells, that only in this data we are dealing with. So imagine how complex it's going to be when we reconstructed all the cells in our data. Mm. OK. This is a how beautiful. glory we've accomplished. It. And um, so once again, let's go back to the slide. Okay. And you Let's, guys all know who Jinsup is, right? Uh, Jinsup, the the. Well, yeah. Yeah. I use <laughs> <laughs> my username is just Jinsup, and I occasionally appear in chat, but um, whenever there's there appears a new cell, please remember there's a there's me behind it. <laughs> <laughs> and all the cells that you guys complete when they get kind of ported out and then gins up and crew, you know, you guys analyze them and make discoveries with them. Okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> Let me see if I can share two screens at a time. Oh. My screens at a time. Okay. Nice. There are two of me. You can you can click either of me. So we are looking at the um, uh, hmm. we're still looking at the Omni screen. So for those guys who haven't seen this before. Um, This is the image data of iWire when looked from Omni, the, the entire data we are looking at. So individual cube of iWire is very small compared to this entire data. If you click on my other me, uh, you have a presentation on it? Yeah. It says the data and iWire cubes. Whoa. There are small three small squares. 
which is the size of the actual IR cubes. So you can compare the size of the entire data and the size of the IR cubes. Mm. So what have we done with these Zolda cells? Have you, have you ever gone through the uh, scientific discovery of ours before? Well, for those who have been with us for a long time, then uh, they might be familiar with these uh, starboard cells. Mm -hmm. We had this challenge of the cells to reconstruct the um, specific type of neurons, which we call starboard cells. And they come in two types. One is off starboard cells, the other is on starboard cells. Um, let's go back to my screen of Omni. So they are like mirrored image. One type is on one, on one side of retina, the other type is on the other side of retina, and they cover um, the entire retina very uh, densely. So you guys could see how, like, when you put them to the side, how the cell bodies, there was one on the top and one on the bottom. And that those cells don't actually even touch each other. So when we're mapping starburst cells, sometimes they're in the, ganglo what, the, in the ganglion cell layer and sometimes in the inner nuclear layer. Okay. Um, actually, let me, let me share my back. These cells known to have some uh, directional flexibility, which means that um, it, the cell is activated only one particular direction of uh, moving object. The directional selectivity of the server cells are like following. So when the object moves in the direction moving from the center of the cells to the outward of the cell, the cell is activated. On the other hand, when the object is moving in the opposite direction, which is from the peak of the cell and to the center of the cell, the cell is less activated. So we wanted to explain the uh, directional selectivity of the server cell which is the um, uh, subject of the uh, major paper published last year. And to understand the um, function of the cell, we also reconstructed both bipolar cells. Actually, the bipolar cells were not reconstructed traced on eye wire because. Uh, they're so hard to do an eyeliner. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe some of you, some good players could reconstruct them, but um, because of the limitation of the size of IOR cubes, it is so hard, even for the game masters or me, to trace the bipolar cells in the smaller cells, uh, small cubes, because for bipolar cells, we need larger context of the image to distinguish the uh, actual boundaries of the cells and the um, some noise inside of the bipolar cells. So we decide to trace the bipolar cells only within lab with the larger volumes. Anyway, we had the um, reconstruction of pretty many, almost uh, 200 of bipolar cells. So we put together all the bipolar cells and starboard cells, and we found this uh, spe special wiring diagram of between starboard cells and bipolar cells. They look like this. One type, we call BC2, is connected to the starboard cells only closer to the cell body. And uh, the other type, bipolar cell 3A, is connected mainly to the outside of the starboard cell. Why is this important? Because the two bipolar cells have different physiology in their uh, time response. 
In this graph, you are looking at the um, time response of different molecular cells. So at the bottom, the, the um, thick, dark black line is how the uh, visual stimulus is given to the bipolar cells. So usually the uh, stimulus is turned up and uh, at the time of 6.0 seconds it is turned off. And after that the bipolar cells respond. It uh, makes some kind of activations. But the two lines, two lines, red and yellow lines, you see the, the curve goes off quickly and um, decays quickly. So these two types of cells are faster cells. On the other hand, the purple and uh, pink curves goes up slowly. So these two cells are slow cells. So, so that basically means that the signal that moves through the bipolar cells is it moves faster through some cells and it yeah. moves slower through other cells. That's and when right. we're talking about a signal that's that's hitting these bipolar cells or that's moving across, say, the branches of a star. Okay, let, let, me, let me show you this animation. Yeah. This, this will be easier for you to understand. So one type of cell is closer to the starboard cell body, and it is slower. Uh, it is denoted as tau in this image. And the other type doesn't have this uh, slowness. And you see the um, gray square on top of the image is not going to move from left to right, right, and the photoreceptor is activated by uh, the uh, stimulus. So let's see. Um, that gray thing would be like maybe something yeah. moving in an animal's field of view. Animation. I I start the animation. Animation just I cannot share the full screen. No. How do I start this animation? <laughs> okay, I got it. Okay, good. Okay. Ooh, nice! Okay. I've seen that animation before. <laughs> Did you see the stars and the black squares moving from this light? No sense, right? <laughs> okay, let's see. The square is moving, and the star star is the signal from photoreceptors to the um, uh, the rest of the cells. So, the square activates photoreceptors on the left first, and then the the photoreceptors on the right second. And uh, you see the uh, star is moving from the photoreceptors and bipolar cells. It seems to just go gray. When it plays, it just turns gray. It turns gray? Yeah, it just, <laughs> it just turns gray. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I cannot share my animation. Man, um, the anime, it's a good animation, guys. And I just played uh, the circuit. Um, uh, OK. Then, then let's go verbal. <laughs> Yeah, okay, there's my mouse pointer. So this star goes down along this line without any waiting. So this star moves, uh, this star is activated first and moves along this line and arrives here first. But this star is activated by this scale later and as it goes this line, it has to wait because BC2 is lower cell and BC2 has some mechanism, internal mechanism to um, hold the activation for a while. So these two stars arrive to the starburst with some uh, time delay. So the starburst is activated twice with the smaller amount. You see the graph on the right. There are two peaks. This represents the uh, activation on the starburst. So there are two small peaks in this case, but um, when the um, uh, the activation on the uh, is on the right hand right arm of the starburst, mm, as the stimulus moves uh, to the right, 
the star on the first photoreceptor starts to move faster than the second. Uh, so this star goes down this line, but it has to wait at here. On the other hand, this star, the second star moves, uh, the second star starts later than the second star, the first star, but it doesn't have to wait. So it slowly moves all the way down this line. So because of this time delay, the star, which began first, can arrive with the second star at the same time of the starburst. So the um, signal to the starburst is summed up because they arrived at the same time. So the peak is higher than uh, when the signal arrived to uh, sequential time steps. So starburst now is activated much more than the previous case. So this explains why Starburst is activated by the stimulus moving outward, and but why it is larger than the uh, uh, activation uh, stimulated by the moving object that moves inward of the Starburst. So that was the uh, result we published last year. But uh, now we are trying to uh, do the same thing on the uh, on starburst cells. I explained earlier that there are two kinds of starburst, on and off starburst. Previous story was about off starburst. Now we are trying to uh, study similar things on the on by on starburst and by plus cells. So, um, What we, what we have found is the following. Um, there were five types of off bipolar cells, but now we have nine types of on bipolar cells, each of which have a different shape and different depth in the retina. And, uh, and what do you mean by on and off bipolar cells? OK. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel, I felt some, time of, some kind of a time limit yeah. today, so <laughs> yeah. I just keep lots of things. So, um, okay, let's go back to this image, which is the uh, eye wire uh, screen, second of me. So um, this is the uh, retina looked from the side, and the depth of the retina is divided into half and half. One half is called the on layer, the other half is called the off layer. So when um, some stimulus is given to this retina, and uh, well, usually the stimulus is uh, turning on of a light and turning off of lights. So some cells, is, some cells are known to uh, be activated when the light is turning on. On the other hand, other cells are known to be activated when the light is turning off. So the cells that are activated by turning on the light tend to um, have their branches on one side of the retina, and the other types that are activated by the turning off of lights uh, tend to have the branches on the other side of the retina. So there are two types, two types of uh, two layers of um, uh, branches that inside the retina. So um, and like in, in that image, you see those big the gray circles on either side. Those are the cell bodies, and then the the darker gray stuff in the middle. Those are actually all the the branches that you guys reconstruct in iWire. Cool. OK, so this is the similar diagram. Um, we found that one type is, as, as in the previous case, one type is connected closer to the servers. And in this case, differently from the previous case, two types of cells are connected mainly to the outside of the server cells. So we are speculating that the closer type is again have the time delay, slower type of cell, and 
there's two types outside con connecting to the servers outside of the cell uh, are the fast cells. We don't know why there are two types of cells that are doing the same thing, but um, I think functionally these two, uh, if you have three type of bipolar cells are playing the similar role as the previous cases. We are pushing this project forward to um, make our second publication that is helped by iWire sometime uh, in the in the close future. Yeah. Then later. More later. science. Okay. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, let's let's go back to the uh, iWire screen again. Um, I wanted to show you some type of known cells. So among these types, so mm, okay. I'm showing you three cells of the same type on this on, on this screen. These cells are known to be uh, these cells are called W3. And they are one of the smallest ganglion cells in the retina. They are very small, and you can compare the size with the size of the server cells. Oh. Uh, three cells, or maybe even four cells of this type, can fit into the field of one server cell very nicely. So you can see, you can compare the size of the cell. So functionally, these type of cells are very specific to small stimulus. So it cannot be activated by um, large dots or big bars like that. It can be only activated by small um, dots. And it is known to be activated by moving object, but it doesn't have the direction of activity. Moving object in any direction can activate these cells. Uh, that much is known about these cells' physiology. And um, what else? Okay. Next. Uh, I don't know if you can see the colors of these cells. Um, there are five. Oh, Those are the bystand ones? Yeah. The, there are four cells in this screen. And as you see from the side, they are on two different layers. On They, they form two different levels. And they, they are called bistratifying bi cells. And this, mm. this particular type is known as on-off reaction therapy in the cells because it is named so because these two levels are two on and off layers, on 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 <laughs> both on and off layers, and they are activated by both turning on and turning off of lights. And interestingly enough, their level, their strip, their depth level. Uh, is exactly inside with the uh, on and off server cells. Huh. So they get a lot of inputs from server cells, both from uh, on servers and off servers. And uh, they are direction selective because server cells have um, different connectivity to uh, the different types, different subtypes of these cells. Uh, the I hope I have time to uh, discuss the details, but um, let's let's just talk about the connectivity. So, okay, that are very well known type of the cells, and uh, let me show some a few of the weird cells. The weird cells. Oh yeah. I like the weird okay. one. <laughs> what? <laughs> you see this? This is very small cell. Is that a whole cell? It, yeah, this is a whole cell. <laughs> <laughs> it has only three, three branches, which goes from the top of the cell body and the bottom, which is very close to 
the uh, the opposite side of the cell wall layer. This is a very small cell, and <laughs> compared to other cell, you can wow. see how small it is. <laughs> and it is a dangerous cell. Well, no known report on the cells that have this shape. I can't see any. I didn't see any of this. Wow. What a strange little cell. Yep. And, um, and there's another very weird cell. Very weird cell. You guys are discovering all the weird cells, all the funky cells that we've never seen before. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is a pipe. <laughs> 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 Maybe Nick, Nick, uh, I, I told Nick. Nick knows this, yes. Yeah. Nick <laughs> asked me about this cell. Well, there is a very small cell body on this side, and. Um, there's no branch that goes into this uh, complex uh, plexiform layer. It only has this thin branch that stays inside of this ganglion cell layer. If you look at the location, you see huh. uh, this bundle of branches. Actually, this is the axons of the ganglion cell, and they move together. Wow. A bundle of axons. Cool. And eventually, they um, gather all together and form the fiber bundle, and uh, it is actually the optic nerve that goes from the eye and the goes back inside of the brain, uh, which is the visual cortex of the brain. So I believe this small cell has only one branch, which is an <laughs> axon, and it doesn't have any other branch at all. So why is there such a cell? <laughs> it doesn't receive any signal at all from other cells. It only can send signal from others. But what signals does it send, even? <laughs> yeah, it's a very strange cell. <laughs> that is weird. And on the other hand, there is a very huge cell compared to, let's compare the size of these two cells. Uh, I cannot even find Oh my gosh, so that little here. tiny one. <laughs> and uh, there's another type. Whoa. This, uh, this type is called alpha cells. Alpha cells? Alpha cell, yeah. Back in the 1970s or 60s or 70s, people didn't know about how many types of cells are there. They just named the cells as alpha, beta, gamma, delta, like that. Yeah. So um, it is found back then because it is huge. It is so easy to find. <laughs> <laughs> Those cells are known to be in many different animals, like cats and rats and um, even the reptiles. So this is very common cells. And um, not much is known about their functions, but uh, they tend to have um, even 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 if it is common to many different animals they seem to have different functions in uh, different animals huh. and uh, yeah they, they, there are many different types of these uh, similar cells so again in this case um, they come in pair oh, sorry example. So one huge cell on one layer, the other huge cell on the other layer. So they are coming paired in the on layer and off layer. So we are trying to study uh, the functions of these cells from the connectivity from other cells. In this case, again, we are looking at the connectivity from bipolar cells to into this cell. Well, I hope someday I can share the detailed story of these cells. <laughs> uh, 
well, maybe in the in the next hangout, or um, yeah. even better is uh, in the form of published paper. Science for science. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I haven't even seen some of those cells in the book. Very nice. Oh, okay, cool. Um, let's see. I'm gonna re. I'm gonna unmute mine. Right. I'm gonna unmute. Uh, I'm gonna. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably gonna toss it over to Chris here. Chris, are you there? I see Chris turned off his video. And he muted his mic. Um, let me ping his real quick. Thanks. That's really cool. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah, did you guys have any questions for um for Jinsup while uh while we get Chris back? <laughs> uh yeah, but if I can yeah, I have a question, but it's not so much for the cells, but we've uh, we've all traced the, the floating seeds and well we've I've been wondering how they form or why they exist. I've noticed that they are usually near frozen cell bodies or cell body Branches. Oh, uh, yeah. I saw the email. Uh, maybe Sean can explain it better than I do. Okay. He, uh, <laughs> he, uh, the consistency of the uh, watershed and the um, spawning of the small oh. fragments that are spawned by the sun. Okay. Um, <laughs> So you guys know the cube, the, the I wire cube, the overlap. Uh, this is the cube, the overlap a little bit, right? And yeah. in, the, in the overlap region, uh, the the how how the segments divide the space in the overlap region are not exactly the same for those two adjacent cubes. Um, you get what I'm saying. So the segments are not exactly are not exactly the same in the overlap region um, between so two cube overlap and in that overlap region the segments are not exactly the same. And because of that, we need to have some special criteria to say um, which segments in the tie of the cube actually match the ones in the parent cube. And all those criteria, sometimes they do generate just a small segment. Um, they do just sometimes just identify one small segment and make that the seed. And also sometimes it may generate two paths, one with a small segment and one with a big, bigger segment. But later on, we will get rid of one of them um, because we are actually the same. That makes sense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not actually sure where Chris is. So how about this? If he does come back, I'll throw it to him and get and have him give you guys an update on the API. Hey guys. But you guys want to see the Princeton setup? Yeah. Oh, there's Chris. Hey. Yeah. Hey, you want me to go now? Yeah. Okay. So Chris, Chris has been working on some cool stuff that he's gonna tell you about, and just give a general kind of like dev update on what's happening in the iWire world. Okay. Uh, so my focus has been pretty much the same since the last time uh, I talked to you guys, which is working on the API. Um, I think I may have mentioned in NYU class, but uh, we started working on. Uh, adding a way for third parties to be able to create their own uh, version of iWire using our uh, back end. So we're still doing the forming the consensus, but they can create a different way to um, submit um, submit a, what we call validation, but basically uh, results for tracing a cube. Um, what I can show you guys as far as how that has gone is that we we have uh, the API for this. Um, we have it published. It's um, it's not finalized, but you can play around with it. I just posted a link. 
Um, but we're going to uh, start, we're going to switch iWire to start using the new API. And aside from allowing third-party clients, um, the way that we've written the API, I think it will speed up development in the future. Um, and we already have some new features that we plan to write using the new API. And those will probably come in the next uh, next few months. Um, what Will, Will, Will has been working on um, Scythe tools, or Scythe complete tools, I think that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that is getting closer to release. Um, it's probably going to be in a beta, t uh, beta testing phase for some of you guys soon. Uh, we are beta testing it right now internally. And that, uh, that is looking pretty sweet, and it's going to have a new, uh, uh, some new user interface uh, changes. Um, let's see, any, any uh, advice of what else to talk to? There's some stuff, but I'm only trying to talk about stuff that we kind of have a more definite release schedule. So, for example, switching the API over, we're trying to get that done. Uh, I gave an estimate of two weeks when it would be ready in, the, in which we can consider switching it over. Can, can uh, you hear me? Yeah. Can you show us your setup there? <laughs> Play my <Can> computer? <laughs> yeah, show the office. Oh, the John's up there. Uh, John? <laughs> well, I don't... Have we given a tour of, like, the new uh, WeWork office? I don't... We haven't really shown that. It, or maybe some I, pictures. Where did, we, where did you say you were? We're at WeWork. It's at WeWork. It's a, it's a cool startup space uh, in uh, downtown yeah, Boston. Yeah, you're in Boston, right? Yeah, so, uh, okay, let me just... Okay, my, my, as far as my personal setup is pretty... Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, Okay, here's something that's... We've been having uh, some networking problems. So uh, I set up this... Uh, hold on. This Raspberry Pi right here. <laughs> uh, um, okay. Our connection from WeWork. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So I'll just uh, show you guys some things. Well, you probably have, like... You've seen this. This is our office. We got... Eyewire logo right here. And uh, I think that you've probably seen the pirate flag before. <laughs> uh, this is Will's desk. Amy sits over here. And uh, this is mine. Let's see. There we go. And we got the TV here. The yeah, TV is uh, usually... Alex's um, render computers are right here. Yeah. The, the TV is usually our mission control, so it usually just shows iWire all the time. So we have a giant live stream of iWire in the office. Yeah. And uh, the game master's room is uh, over there. A few, uh, <laughs> few rooms over. And John's there? So John. Uh, John's, uh, John's, um, uh, out at the moment. Oh, well, so we have an audio, so it's not there. Yeah, so that's, that's, like, half of the office, and then, what, the other half of the office is not there because of we're having network issues, so all the iWire game masters that have been having to work at home for a couple Yeah, so, hopefully uh, we got that problem fixed today. Woo! -hoo! That's awesome. Yeah. Or so some other time, actually, but oh, well, that's uh, good though. So some other time when everybody's actually there, we'll do we'll do a more comprehensive hangout with you guys to show you the WeWork digs. Um, yeah. Yeah. Can somebody figure out? Can somebody figure out why my camera's not working? Maybe you haven't muted on your end. No, we can't actually turn off your camera. Oh, okay. I, th I thought um, maybe it turned off or something. It, it must no. just not be working right then. 
Yeah. Do you guys want to? Do you guys want to meet the uh, the Princeton gang monsters? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have ever seen them before. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. I don't know, Chris. Do you even know the Princeton tracers? Um, uh, barely. How many? How many people do you have working with, working with you in Boston? Right there. How many do we have in Boston? We have seven total, officially, oh, no. and then we have some yeah. interns. And then we and have the, the four Princeton tracers. Want to yeah, Game Tracers, why don't you guys introduce yourself? Oh. Yourselves. <laughs> What's your iWire username? Hoodwink. Hoodwink? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mike. I'm M.L. White's 1988. Eric's Oh. <laughs> and I'm Don. And I'm JPD and iWire. Mm hmm. I'm Ben Silverman, and I'm also <laughs> Ben Silverman. Too. You know Ben Silverman. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Merlin Moore, and I'm Merlin Moore. Merlin Moore, yeah. And what are you, you, what are you guys working on? Do you guys want to just talk a little bit about what you've been doing besides eyewear stuff? Oh, you. Yeah. Uh, sure. Well, I'd, I'd like, I'd like to start with, uh, with uh, saying I've been, I've been, uh, yeah. like, uh, I've been uh, working on, on this, this, this just chunk of. Of super voxels, and there's this 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 really ugly glia cell, real cell that just keeps growing and growing. I mean, I mean, look, I mean, look at this. <laughs> These guys are all using Omni. So this is a new data set, most importantly, yeah. and this data is gonna be the data for our new game. Yep. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! The new game. Even beyond Highwire Two, this is about the brain. Yep, the the uh, proper brain. And, uh, I don't know. We, we haven't decided what to call it yet. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, hopefully you will see, you will meet this game uh, later this year. Yes. Around October or November. Yeah. <laughs> Much more difficult, they're saying. Step up your game. Step up your eyewire game. <laughs> All right. Cool. Oh yeah, and we've got um, Nick Nasteroff is here, Crazy Man four eight six five is here, Marissa's here, um, Manfred. Mm -hmm. I don't know what your IWR username is, and then we've got Melissa who was here earlier. Ah uh, yeah. And data. Huh? And oh data. yeah, that's mine. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, for your your icon just looks black. I, I just blended in. Sorry. <laughs> 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 All right, cool. That's the that's the Princeton. The Princeton of Princeton. There's there's other offices here, but I think um, I don't know if people are actually in them because it's it's almost five o'clock on Friday and people are going to parties in New York. Just <laughs> <laughs> them all the equations and stuff that are written all over the glass. Yeah. Oh. Oh, look! I just walked into the wrong office on accident. But look, you guys know who these guys are? Ashwin and Jingping. What are you guys What are you guys working on? We've got the eyewires at the tail end of our hangout. They're, they're planning for Friday evening. Preparing, they're preparing for Friday evening by coding. Lots and lots of coding. <laughs> so, Jingping, you've been working on the, the AI, right, for the new, yeah, um, for the new data sets? Uh, yeah. Trying is on network and trying to speed up the training. Yeah. Nice. And Ashwin is hard at work coding doing all sorts of things, and he hates when it put a computer in his face, so I'll stop. <laughs> okay. All right, well, do you, I guess, do you guys have... So... <laughs> champagne and beer. So we're going to cheers. Or a champagne? We are going to make a toast to you guys. Complete phase two. Did someone say they had a question? It's so quiet. 
Well, I didn't have a question, but you know, you know that picture that I did for the website, like that window that I got the idea from. It's like right up the hall from where you are. He's breaking. It. Maybe. You keep cutting out, Amy. Here, Melissa. Yeah, I, I just said that, like, that. Well, I'll, I'll say it in the chat. I just said oh, that you're thing. working. You seem to be working okay now. Yeah, I just said that, you know, that picture of this little stuffed mouse that I did for the blog, that, that window that I got the idea from is actually, like, right around the hall from you. Like next to the receptionist desk, and because people write equations all over everything, and I, I'm kind of curious, like what they're for and what they do with those. The equations that are written like all over the boards and yeah. windows here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, probably different labs. I would. Oh, oh, do you mean like right here? Yeah, that's one of them. Well, it's not a discussion on our data structure. <laughs> I'll bring. How, how IOI cubes are stored. Yeah, I just, or, uh... I just thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. <laughs> For science. We use our <laughs> door instead of whiteboard. Because <laughs> <laughs> it is yeah, a whiteboard. That window, that window next to the receptionist office, like out by the entrance, it used to be covered. They erased it now, but it used to be it was covered like from top to bottom in blue marker. With equations. Yeah. You want to do the honors? This is you brought this. Shane's gonna do the honors and we're gonna toast to you guys. So if you have your beers with you. <laughs> Oh yeah. Woo! All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Let's shoot to them. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. I thought it was. Oh yes, we're so. Higher. Okay. <laughs> Cheers to you, to you, I wires. I hope we eventually get to meet all of you, yeah. all of you in person, and I hope one day we get to just have like a giant. A giant eyewear gathering and a party for all the millionaires and sorry, I, all the I don't need players. to deliver this to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You, you want this? <laughs> you have some too, Shane. All right, I'll... we've got a toast to you. Yeah, there's a lot of exciting things kind of in the works for for the next year, and you know, this is just the beginning. So, cheers. For the eyewear. The eyewear for science. For science. <laughs> All right, we'll sign off now. For all eyewires. <laughs> yes. Thanks for helping us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>